Oh shit, here we go again. Today's video sponsor is GVG Mall, where using my SKG discount code leads to a 25% off across several products, making a Windows 10 serial key only $16. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account and all you need to do is to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. Hello guys, I'm Shindgame Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So as for today's video, we're gonna talk a bit about not the RDNA 3, but the Intel Arc Alchemist A770, okay? Uh, we have some new benchmarks um, and the card was kind of spotted in Gitch, in Git. Geekbench and also Pudget or Budget Bench. Now I do not think that this is the um, is the best Intel performer, so I think they they will have a card uh, at least a bit faster than this one. But this one is supposedly uh, the mid-term card, the mid-end, the mid-high end. They will have like one or two cards over this one, I suppose, okay? We have the, once again, Arc Alchemist A770 graphics card spotted in Geekbench and Budget Bench benchmark. Now, we have several things to notice in these benchmarks, but one thing that should be noticed is this one. So. Uh, the Intel Arc A770 graphics graphics card was recently tested through the Budget Bench DaVinci Resolve benchmarks, benchmarking software. During the output released on the internet, the graphics driver used for the test was unknown. 30.0.101.1723. Okay, so the graphics the graphic driver was unknown. And since these cards aren't even released, take, the re take these results with a really big grain of salt, because, well, first, these are most likely engineering samples, so the, the final samples will perform better, and on top of that, we have the drivers, which are still on the cooking, or are still in the cooking, so um, the drivers will also improve many, many things. And remember, these are the first Intel GPU desktops. I mean, at least in the in the last 20 years, okay? These are the first ones. So uh, there will be a lot of work to do, but competition is the key, and I'm really, really happy to have Intel GPUs at least desktop sided, okay? So we have some benchmarks here, uh, the standard overall score. Uh, we have the system tested. It was a, a 9600K, which is bad overall the memory was also bad 2667 megahertz so yeah it was using windows 11 and basically that's it so we have we have also some some specifications on the card so uh platform vendor intel of course the device vendor intel the device name finally we have the intel arc a770 i suppose we will have the 780 and maybe the 790 uh we have 512 computer units, but this is not true. This is uh, this must be a mistake. Device memory we have 2.12.7 gigabytes, which which should indicate like 13 gigabytes. It makes no sense. So I don't know what's going on in here. What kind of memory Intel has? VRAM. Or maybe it counts the dedicated memory as well. Maybe it is just 8 gigabytes, but it is counting the dedicated memory. Maybe. And we have a maximum frequency of 2400 megahertz. So, if you don't know, uh, Intel actually contracted uh, Raja Kuduri from AMD, the guy that was working on the Vega cards. And it is him who's leading the GPU department. So, this is something really, really over Vega because Vega would not... And, and I repeat, Vega, Vega architecture or some variant of the Vega architecture would never go 2400 megahertz. And I repeat, never. It means that the architecture is actually pretty nice uh, because it can reach indeed good frequencies. Okay, like for example, the RDNA 2. Uh, NVIDIA is going the opposite way where they have less frequency, but more uh, more physical power, more physical parts. Basically, it's the opposite of what we had before in between NVIDIA and AMD. AMD always had way more physical units, but less frequency, and now it's the opposite. NVIDIA has more physical units, but less frequency, okay? It's interesting, actually. Um, as for the results, we actually have here the results on Geekbench. Now, 
This is supposed to be competing, this car, the A770, it is supposed to be competing with the 3070 and the 6700 XT. But as you can see, the 6700 XT uh, scores over uh, 100,000, yes, and the A770 is scoring 88,000, okay? Over 100,000. 88,000 and the 3060 uh, is actually scoring 132,000 okay so if we if we actually look into the scores the scores don't don't mean much and like I told you before take this with with a grain of salt because of course if we go this is just Geekbench but it, it's raw power it's just a synthetic benchmark if you're interested in gaming then these benchmarks won't tell you shit look for example at the 6700 XT the 6700 XT will perform as good or even in some scenarios better than the 3070 in gaming even more when using smart access memory okay it will perform better and still we have like 30,000 uh, points less than the 3070 okay so if we took these results um, like apples to apples we would say immediately that the 3070 is way faster than the 6700 XT overall and that's not the case the 6700 XT although it has way less points in Geekbench once again synthetic benchmark in terms of gaming it will perform way better than the 3070 in some scenarios okay equal or better in some scenarios losing in others but most likely equal or better and after we have decent drivers, I think that in terms of gaming, the A770 will at least perform like the 6700 XT. At least, that's what I hope. And if it doesn't perform, all comes to pricing, because, I mean, even if it is a bit slower than the 6700 XT and the 3070, it all comes to pricing. Imagine that we have the 6700 XT at like 500 euros. Just an example, okay? 500 euros. If we actually get an A770 just a bit slower, but instead of 500 euros, we can get one, let's say, 350 or 400 euros, most people will indeed consider, consider going to the A770 instead of the other cards. Even more, even, even more now that Intel is actually making a, a step up in terms of drivers and in terms of the control suite that they are releasing. Uh, so, yeah... It comes to pricing, it comes to actual final performance due to drivers and not being an engineering sample as well. Now we have some comparisons here. For example, comparing the 3070 Ti, the 6700 XT, so it should be the 3070 here, not the 3070 Ti, whatever. But okay, for example, we have the GPU name, okay, ACM G G10. For the NVIDIA, it's the GA104, and for AMD, it's the Navi22. In terms of the architecture, we have the, the architecture, the XE HPG, funny name. For the NVIDIA, we have the NPEAR, and for the AMD, we have the RDNA 2.0. It's not 2.0, it's just 2, but whatever. As for the, the node, it is actually interesting because uh, on the AMD cards we have the 7 nanometers node apart from the 6500 65, XT because it is actually a mobile chip that was taken and used as a desktop one, that's why it sucks so much. As for the NVIDIA part, we have 8 nanometers and we have TSMC 6 nanometers for Intel, which is actually pretty nice. In terms of die size, it is actually really interesting because we have a die size of 406 millimeters it is bigger than the 3070 ti that it is that is way faster than the 6700 xt okay so we have way bigger dies than both amd and nvidia we have way more transistors and still the performance is lower okay so transistor density is also higher the f uh, the fp32 cores um are a bit lower okay so we have more transistors a bigger die size but less cores but we in terms of fp32 units we actually have way more units than the 6700 xt uh, the clocks are supposedly to be uh 2400 megahertz teraflops in terms of fp30 32 uh, are in comparison with the 3070 ti and way higher than the 6700 xt 
also with 256 bit buzz instead of 192. So there's a lot on the table and I think that these results will improve a lot till these re GPUs are actually released. Because as I told you, here, we have way bigger die size, we have way more transistors, we have way more FP32 units, at least way more than the 6700 XT. Um, we have more teraflops, we have more memory buzz, uh, and we have more memory capacity. So it's a win-win situation overall. So if Intel actually manages to pull this off, pretty nice at a really competitive price, I think that these GPUs will sell well. I mean, we have so much more raw power than the other two cards overall, um, and that's one of the reasons why the older AMD GPUs aged so well, and people call it fine wine. It's because in comparison to their NVIDIA counterparts, they had way, way more physical units. They had more TMUs, more ROPs, more computer units. They had, um, they had more physical units, and that's why they aged better than their NVIDIA con counterparts, okay? That's... Why? So that's the reason why I think this Intel GPU will actually perform way better than we are expecting, okay? That's what I hope, and I hope that the pricing isn't actually bad as well, okay? So guys, that's all for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching, and sorry for the long-ass video, because I'm in perfect notion that I have no talent to make these news videos and I it's not really my thing I'm like more of the testing guy so I just did this because I really know that something will come and I will definitely buy an Intel GPU if it is well priced I will buy one and just not for testing I I'm really I'm really eager to see what Intel will actually bring to the market because we do need competition because NVIDIA and AMD are both settling in those price tags uh, with those margins and, I mean, the market doesn't look good. Nani? Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe and share this video once again and see you in the next one, guys. Ciao.